Okay, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Town of Auburn Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for Thursday, August 21st, 2014. Um, a little housekeeping issues first. I just want to let everybody know that's present that the meeting will be recorded and will be replayed on the local access. And I also have to ask if anybody is recording the meeting here this evening. Motion to open. Hearing none, seeing none. Do I have a motion to open? Motion to open the hearing. We'll make, them make a motion to open the hearing. Motion to open the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we have a hearing at 7 o'clock. The applicant, Mr. Stephen Knott of 90 Umwood Street, requesting a variance under Section 5.4, Table 1 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaws for the construction of a retaining wall along Gibson Road, Auburn Mass, Map 12, Parcel 117. Mr. Knott, if you could approach the podium, please, sir. If you could introduce yourself for the record and give your address. And Hi, everybody. I'm Stephen Knott, and I live at 90 Umwood Street. And I'm here to basically ask for a variance for a retaining wall tonight on my property. Uh, it's going to be a 156 foot wall. Uh, 102 feet of the wall will be along adjacent to my house along Gibson Road. And 54 feet of the wall will be coming in between the 166 Hampton Street property and my property. Uh, basically the wall is about, on an average, about eight and a half feet high. Um, along Gibson Road. That's going to be one consistent level all the way down from the front of the wall to the back of the wall. And when we get to the corner and start going up in between the properties, we're going to start building back into the grade to uh, level the whole area out in the back of the house. Uh, the wall is going to be built out of two foot by two foot by six foot stamped concrete blocks from Dauphiné's Concrete. I have a picture and a little package I put together for my engineer, you guys. I'm bringing up. Yes, some. please. They're uh, interlocking concrete blocks. There's some Thank pictures you. in there. Um, there's a mixed ratio in there. I've built these before. So. <laughs> They're stamped stone faced concrete blocks. And, uh, Basically, the reason behind this whole deal is I'm on that side of my house adjacent to Gibson Road. Um, for the past eight years, I've been losing grade on that side of the house. There was an existing stone wall that was put up there and then buried. That stone wall has now moved probably about a foot and a half to two feet over the easement line and which everything behind the wall, soil, grade, everything is now eroding down behind it. Um, there are some pictures in the package of the brief that I gave to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that there is a different color of brick. My house is brick. And there's a couple lines of red brick underneath the brown brick. And that's essentially where my grade was about five to six years ago. Um, it's now eroding down the hill and can't seem to stop it. My back patio is also now probably about three inches above the grade, which is also on that side of my house uh, adjacent to Gibson Road. So that whole side is going down the hill and now that they're improving the road down there and doing some other things, um, it seems to be going a little bit faster these days. Mm. But um, basically, there's going to be a fence on top of the wall going around the back. It's going to be a six-foot fence around the back side going along Gibson Road. And then there's going to be a four-foot fence halfway down the wall, 102-foot side along Gibson Road, um, just for safety reasons and looks, things like that. Um, basically, my engineer is currently working on it. I was hoping to have prints for you tonight. Um, but he wasn't able to get them to me. He's currently working on it. Uh, he should be done within the next couple days or so. He said he would be done tonight, but fortunately, I don't have the engineered prints from you. John Reel is doing the engineering of it, and uh, the survey and the topography was done by HS&T uh, engineering firm. So. Uh, I don't know if you want me to get into the details behind everything or you just want to ask the certain questions that you guys want to ask or, you know, how you want to, if you have any okay. questions. <clears throat> well, as a point of order, I just want to let everyone know that uh, 
Ms. Roach is going to be here late this evening. So for the time being, I'd like to ask that Mr. Natoli serve as a full voting member for the time being. Um, so before we move forward, what I'd like to do is kind of just um, offer the members opportunities, starting with uh, Mr. Cussey. Do you have any questions for the homeowner? Um, I don't. Okay. I'm pleased that an engineer is uh, involved. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, looks, it looks to me to be a quality wall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Natoli? Uh, this the wall that's being built just on just on the construction end. Is it going to have the fabric behind it? You know, as you know, we've got yep, the cinch. Yeah, we're doing uh, geo grid at two levels. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at the second tier and the third tier. They're going to go back the appropriate right, uh, so many feet. Whatever the specifications from the geo grid call for, they're going to go back that far. And then we're also going to re rod stake them, not just lay them into the. Um, the grade, so to speak, because usually you just lay stone on top of it, and the the weight of the the fill and everything you put behind the wall holds the geo grid in place. We're going to do a, a little extra step, and we're also going to re rod the geo grid, rebar straight down in through the geo grid to hold it in place, even um, as an extra security. And, the chair. and is it going to be right at the property line? Um, well, along Gibson Road, I've got a, uh, there's a 20-foot easement off of Gibson Road, and then the 10-foot setback basically brings where I can put the wall six inches away from my house. So it's going to be probably about six inches behind the easement on 102, on uh, Gibson Road, and then when it comes up between the two properties, I think it's um, six feet I have to start from the actual property line to make the correct 90 degree corner to match up with the 54 feet that comes up to the end to still be on my property and not go on to theirs. So it'll be over the setback lines, but it, it won't encroach on their property at all. Just just a clarification mm -hmm. on, on the, maybe the building inspector, it, what exactly is the relief that we're looking for here? <clears throat> the. Uh, the relief that I'm seeing is, is that it is right to Gibson Road, okay. right, right on the property line. The, Steve, the um, easement that you speak of is, can you talk to that a little bit? Uh, well, the, the Gibson Road is, it, I think it was a private road at one time. It is now a public road. So for road improvements, um, there's a 20-foot Actually, yeah, it's a 20 foot from the edge of the road easement um, that the town has for road improvements. Um, so basically, you don't want to put any solid structures over that easement. Um, so that, that 20 foot easement's from the center line of Gibson Road back to the property. Is it the center line? Yeah. Center line? I yeah. Can't figure that out. So who, pretty sure. And it's a private road still, mm -hmm. but the other side of Gibson's being developed. In. And then I guess to the chair, I need, we need a clarification on the if this is a structure or because anything over eight feet is considered a structure. Right. So a clarification on that. The actual bylaw that he's seeking relief is 5.3.1. Correct. That's what I thought which, as well. Which okay. is the fact that we have a wall um, that's going to be larger than eight feet. And then um, he's going to have guard protection on top of that with a fence, mm -hmm. meeting the building code requirements for that. So we're looking for setback, and, and we're looking for um, 3.1. Again, anything over 8 is usually a, is considered a structure, so we need something to say on that. Correct. Okay, anything else? Mr. Natoli? No, I won't do it for Okay. You. Mr. Chicolo? Thank you. Through the chair, the the height of this wall, will that bring 8 to 10 feet? Will that bring it with the grade, <coughs> excuse me, that currently matches the very, very short level piece of grade that you have right beside the house? Yes. When I say very short, I'm talking about 12 inches. Yes, essentially. Okay. Yep. That will bring it even with that grade then. So you're not going above it or anything like that. Oh, no, no. no. And th once you're at that grade, you will fill, and you will fill that area, 
the area on the Gibson side or the, the area or from behind it? The area from your house to the wall. Yep, we're going to fill it. Okay. Fill it off and make it all level. Okay, and that'll be with properly engineered gravel stone. Yep. Yep, we have a dra the uh, part of the engineering is a drainage engineered drainage spec to go with the wall that'll drain all the gutters from the house and everything that um, to go with the, basically the, the pitch of the land. And where will that drain to? Uh, well, he's going to, I think he's going to drain it down. I'm not sure, but I think he's going to drain it down and dig a, well, it's going to drain out the front of the wall. There's going to be four or five, four inch pipes that drain out the front of the wall on the Gibson side of the wall that's going to carry all the drainage behind the wall and the drainage from my gutters. It's all going to be tied into so one and go you out. Will, <clears throat> you'll be directing water from your gutters and your property onto Gibson Road? Uh, no, there's going to be a dry well at the end of the wall where it's going to be sunk into a dry well is what uh, and that, my engineer that, said. Do you have any approximate dimensions of that dry well? Uh, no, he's the engineer is going to give me that those dimensions. Okay. Once, once you've if everything is granted, once you've filled this area, you plan to put a fence on top of that, and how mm -hmm. high? Excuse me? How high will that fence be? The fence on the back side, um, it'll come down the 54 feet on the back side, and then about 50 feet on the long side of the wall, it's going to be a six-foot fence. The rest of the 50-foot is going to kind of tear down to a four-foot fence. And taper into Elmwood? Uh, no, it's, it doesn't go... It's I'm stopping it basically right at the front of my house. It won't go past the, the, the wall doesn't go past the front of my house. Okay. So 102 feet basically lines it up about five feet back from the front of my house if you're looking at it from Elmwood Street. Okay. Anything else? All set, thank you. Okay. Mr. Marin? Uh, I thank you through the, through the chair. So, so Mr. Nutt, the, um, the request for variance and relief would include the height plus the height of the fence, correct? Let me clarify that because it's a great question. Um, the fence is getting, it's not behind the retaining wall, it's actually getting drilled into the top of the retaining yes, wall and structurally in. into the wall. So I think you hit on a good point. Okay. Uh, I think the relief being sought is for the entire structure of the retaining wall plus the guard fence at the top. So that guard fence, he's, um, Steve's six feet. Um, six feet around the back and four feet. Um, halfway down the side and you're losing me a little bit with with that um, as far as the um, what's side and what's back this is the back over here okay so the along the two property lines here this is 166 Hampton over here okay so that's where the six foot fence would the be. six foot will come all the way down and wrap around to the edge of the patio here okay and then it'll go down to a four foot fence down this side I don't know if you want to point that out yep. to those to those folks. So the, the back side is essentially this part is 166 Hampton is right here. Mm -hmm. And the six foot fence will come all the way down to the patio right here. And then it'll drop down to a four foot fence continuing to the front. Mm -hmm. Guard protection, just as a side note, through the chip, it's a three foot minimum mm -hmm. for guard protection at the top of that retaining wall. And then um, Steve had come to the building department prior um, when we requested a variance. And uh, that wall system with the weep holes and, and the system that he's proposing is all going to have oversight by an engineer for that design of that system. And it, and it includes everything, the, the geogrid, like he said, it's all part of a stamped engineered design uh, through building code. Once we, the closer we reach 10 feet in, in height, we need to have, it's an automatic engineered system. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so we've requested, because we came so close to that, that that be done. And Steve's been uh, uh, complying with that. That, that's really helpful to note. Um, and so what, just one final point, uh, Mr. Chairman. So if, if, um, if there's an opportunity and, and this is approved, um, with a condition, I'd like to add, um, and I know we're not there yet, but if we go there, I'd like to explore a little bit about what we want to ask for 
the specifications um, and uh, confirmations around the dry well mm -hmm. um, and how that's designed specifically for runoff. Okay. And then if there's any perpetual maintenance on that, mm -hmm. um, checkups and maintenance for certain intervals mm -hmm. to make sure that's draining properly. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to add that I walked the property with the property owner, and um, you can clearly see that there has been some erosion issues, <clears throat> excuse me, there, uh, along with some recent construction that is not related to his property that is having an effect over there. Um, so I think regardless of how we come to a conclusion, I think it would be important to sort of give the homeowner some relief in this situation. Uh, and I'd like to just add that for a variant, so you're fully aware, I'm going to read the paragraph right from our bylaws is 9.5.5 mandatory findings. So before the grant of any variance from the requirements of this bylaw, the Board of Appeals must specifically find that one, owing to circumstances related to the soil conditions, shape, or topography of the land or structures, and specifically affecting soil, land, or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. A literal enforcement of the provision of this bylaw would include substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, and two, that desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the bylaw. So there are certain criteria that we have to make sure that you meet before we can grant you a variance and that basically that paragraph outlines that. So in my humble opinion, I think that we have an issue with the, uh, the land and structures, the soil conditions, the shape and topography all tend to fit. I think also with the erosion issues he has going on over there. Uh, and I also see that there is a financial hardship in the event that we don't grant some type of relief that this could have a serious negative effect on this property in the long term as well. So with that being said, um, do we have anything else? Okay. And, uh, and, uh, just to just throw this out there because um, the only issue I would have would be um, this is private at this point. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the town is thinking of taking over this road. If the town takes over this road, we have a structure now that's built in, on the town road property and within the no, easement. And it's you, behind the easement. It's within the easement will go to the town if they're, if they're going to take over the road. So my only, I just don't know how that's going to work with a, uh, a 10 foot structure or retaining wall being within that if the town takes it over. Uh, uh, through the chair, on the plan, the, uh, the walls behind the 20-foot easement mm -hmm. and on, on his property, not, with, not on the easement? So the, the road that, we, that I went there to see, that road, is, that in the, is the road itself in the easement? Or is? Yeah, the road itself Second. is made up of the easement, So that area. I wish we, I can't see the really see is, the dimensions. What's sure. the dimensions from? Because there's a cliff well, on the other side of that road. Yeah, it doesn't look to be more than 16 feet between to width. If you look at the um, uh, on hit the plan that Mr. Knott submitted, mm -hmm. there's a uh, a 20 foot easement indication right here on the left right? hand yep. end, right at the just off the 90 degree corner that? in the retaining wall. Yeah, do you have a bigger one that just is really small? God, no, go over there, but. Guy. Yeah, it's here. My understanding uh, is that the 20 feet, when it's a private road, it's the access on, or the, the lots on either side. Yeah, as long as if it's a private road, you go to the center, the ones that people own that and this. Yeah. But is it going to be a public road at any point? The. Um, I, the only thing I can answer with regards to that, I've, I've had conversations with um, Bill Coyle, the town engineer, because of the construction going on on the other side of the lot. And the um, request has been made to that gentleman when he develops out Gibson Road to provide a road improvement plan and get approval. Um, the classification of that road after, the, I'm not 100% uh, familiar with it. Um, as far as, because I think there is a classification where it still remains um, somewhat private. It, it doesn't get handed over to the town, but still Bill Coyle and the DPWs would be required to maintain it. Yeah, until town meeting accepts it. But I just didn't know if, 
would that be part that gets accepted by the town at that point? And then is the town going to be liable if we accept the road for the maintenance of the wall? Oh. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. through, my understanding of, and my interpretation of this, um, Mr. Natoli, is that uh, the wall is not set within the easement. The 20-foot easement is before it, and the wall is set beyond the easement. So in the event that the town would ratify and take over ownership of this road, the wall would never be within the easement that the town would then take control of. So I would interpret that, that this wall would always be retained, owned by the owner and maintained by the owner, and it would never encroach on the 20-foot easement. And if I'm interpreting these drawings in that fashion, mm -hmm. that's my understanding. Six inches behind the face and of the wall actually, is six inches behind the easement. Mm -hmm. And that's how, I, that's how I read that. Thank you very much for these things. Yeah, that would might be helpful. A dozen. Thank you. Oh yeah, let's do the big okay, one. Yeah, the great. Thank you. So This is 20 feet. Mm -hmm. the 20, you have the 20 feet. And the 20 feet. Yeah. The, 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 the it's a well-designed. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what it's from. According to this, yeah. No. Okay. okay, do we have any further discussion on that matter? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to grant the variance based upon relief from the two previously discussed issues of height and the six inch setback that you were referring to and the six inches of setback area that you were referring to. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, seeing none. Okay, can I have a motion to close the hearing? Oh, I'm sorry, let me take that back. Uh, do we have any conditions that we'd like to include? So, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, if I may, I'd like to add a condition just that um, to the uh, to the drywall, um, and and feel free to um, to help um, articulate this. Uh, but uh, what I'd like to do is is just make a condition that uh, the drywall that he speaks of, that when that's designed, um, that um, that be submitted for design through the engineer mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, if there is any maintenance um, that it is and we, we just have a clear understanding of where that drainage is going okay um, and how that's designed um, to the drywall and then if there's any maintenance to it so I believe the permit wouldn't be able to be granted regardless without the completed plans being submitted to uh, the uh, code enforcement department so I think the easiest way to say that is that uh, all required provisions be met prior to the permit being issued from the code enforcement department? That certainly, this, uh, certainly satisfies my Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ciccolo? No, I was just saying that you have the two conditions that mm -hmm. on uh, of my motion. Okay. If you yes, if it would, just also subject to the to the plan presented to the board, probably should make note of the plan number just for location. Okay. And everything is as to a plan. Okay. Anything else? Okay, congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. And I'll get those prints over to you as soon as I can. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Motion to mm -hmm. motion motion close the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the next order of business we have to do is finish our reorganization from last month. Uh, so do I have a motion to open for the purpose of reorganization? Motion to open for the purpose of reorganization. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we have to elect a vice chair. Do I have any motions for a vice chair? I make a motion for Mike Marin for vice chair. I believe we had a motion at the last meeting. We did already? Okay, yeah. I apologize. Can you refresh my memory on that? Uh, I made, made a motion. motion. Okay. For Dennis. Okay. Um, there was a question because he is an alternate. Yes. Whether he could uh, 
Can you come, Vice Chair? Chair. Right. And clarification purposes, I was told no. All cadets cannot be brought to the Vice Chair position. Who told you that, by the way, just, just for clarification? Uh, I had a meeting with the town manager. Okay. And did she reference any particular... Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. No, not right now. But I was told that alternates could not be made vice chair. Okay, I just didn't know or, any where she got that from, just to, in case... I can look into it and find yeah. out. If it's written anywhere, I'd like to see it. If that's okay. okay. So with that being said... We have a motion okay. now. Yeah. Okay. On the floor. For Mike Marin as vice chair. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any other nominations? You looking for more nominations? Uh, well, I think we we can have the right to other nominations, um, correct? Um, I'd like to name Rich, because he's, you know, Point Rich of order, Cussie. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. And I apologize if I'm out of order. I'm trying to learn this business as quickly as possible. Quite all right. <laughs> Point of order would be the motion made by an alternate. Correct. Okay. Okay. There's no, yes. there's no, there's no, there's no statute that you that that relates to any of this. There's no statute that relates to alternates voting for um, uh, officers. There's, there's point of order made would be the motion made by a, a alternate who's a non-voting member. Voting members on this part is only voting members on. Uh, voting members of this board are five. No, no, no. As far as the office, it's determined by. Uh, a either a statute or something in the town that, that has written uh, criteria for that. It's not written in state. This is a state uh, authorized board. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the in that that says alternates. There are many towns alternates do vote on officers. Well, this is one of the towns that alternates do not vote. Where did you hear that from? We are a five member voting no, the, I'm, board. I'm talking about, are, no, I'm we talking about five in. member. Mr. Totoli, I'm asking, I'm answering your question. No, but you don't have. When we were voted in and, and appointed by the Board of Selectmen. We were appointed as voting member, full voting members or alternates. Correct. On issues of uh, variances and special permits and things like that. On organization, and there's many towns that have five voting members because that's what it is, and alternates for alternates vote. It's a, it's, a, it's a structure of the town's criteria or, or ordinance, which we don't have one. Well, I think what we've had is clarification from the town manager. Who has I know no you may be saying it may be that, but um, our chairman has had a meeting with the town manager. Well, I want to be clear that the Board of Selectmen is the appointing authority. That is correct. And I sought clarification simply to, for that purposes. So it technically is the Board of Selectmen who is the granting authority in this case. Correct. So I think we would be best advised to revisit the issue through the Board of Selectmen for clarification. Should that be the case, then I will withdraw my motion until further clarification, and we will operate without a vice chairman. And I'm certainly we can, we can have an answer before the next meeting. I'm confident that. would be that. preferable. I'll try to get it on the agenda for the selectmen's meeting uh, as long as it's posted long enough and we have a public hearing on it. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, so um, after last meeting, um, I actually did, as, as one of the newest members, okay. did seek some advice from okay. our uh, appointing authority okay. and went to um, uh, Ms. Ms. Goodrich, uh, mm -hmm. the head of the Board of Selectmen, and she confirmed for me, um, albeit verbal, mm -hmm. she confirmed for me uh, the statements being made by Mr. Chicolo. So the, um, I, I think that based on the confusion and the challenge on this board, mm -hmm. um, before we go forward, I would request that we seek her counsel directly in the, in, in the Board of Selectmen's counsel and perhaps get written discussion um, confirmed around this issue. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not it's to invite her to our next meeting or to have uh, an executive session, if that's appropriate, uh, with her to seek, seek clarification and get this um, in minutes and in writing mm -hmm. so that there's no further debate um, or, or challenge to this issue. Okay, so I think my intention as chair would be to have a uh, professional and courteous conversation with all parties concerned um, to find out what our best way to move forward with this issue is and seek clarification, but I don't think it would be appropriate to have an executive session. I think it would be required of us to have a public hearing. Uh, so, uh, but I'm gonna seek that out, because again, this is my first meeting as chair. I'm kind of open to can of worms here. So I'd like to make sure that we follow everything 
in terms of ethical guidelines, regulations, rules. So we're going to make sure we get to the bottom of it and make sure that we do it correctly and legally. And, and I appreciate your comments and response that, that mm -hmm. I wouldn't suggest in the executive session uh, that it would be off protocol or procedure. If it needs to be an open session, then I would welcome that as well. And if but it I, is, in fact, an open session, we'll have the minutes that will we'll stand for the record as well. Agreed. But, but I think that the, the correct approach is to go to our appointing authority mm -hmm. uh, for affirmation, uh, okay. for next steps, put the organization piece aside so that we can carry on the business of the board. Okay. So as you can see, as new chair, I'm going to have some uh, hiccups in the road here. And uh, I'll do my best to work those yeah, things out. Yeah, and, uh, and as a further thought, I think you might want to uh, actually get uh, advice from legal counsel also. Right. Yeah, I think we'll because address all the issues. Again, this is a state mandating board. Mm -hmm. uh, the selectmen appoint members. From that point on, there really is no other, in there is no overseeing of the board at that point by right. the board of selectmen. It's right. an autonomous board. It's meant to be an mm -hmm. autonomous board in that. So with that, I would assume that we probably, since it's state mandated, that we get legal counsel on right. how I agree. Whichever, whichever appropriate course of action is what we'll take. I think that would be the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to table that motion. Is that correct, sir? You withdraw? I will absolutely withdraw the motion until clarification. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Do I would make a motion to close that hearing. That part of it? That I mean, part of it, just this part of it. Yeah, I don't think it's an actual hearing. It's part of the open hearing. Okay. So um, we can probe if you'd like, but uh, have well, some more information on. Well, that's what material. I was going to suggest. Do we have any other new business to discuss? Yep. These are some of the things we talked about on the last one. I, I'll give just two for everyone here. Pass them down? Yeah, pass, pass them down. down. Do we have enough? You have one, two, yeah, three. I, I should have Seven. more. Sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, that's you. If anyone so needs it, these are just procedural things that were done. Uh, there's two versions, actually. Uh, just when Adam was here, we're talking about even having something out for the people to see so they know where in the process mm -hmm. and how the process works and where they get to speak and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the first one uh, was just says conduct and procedure. That one was the original. And then there was another version that was done. Do you have to? Okay. Did you? Yeah. So she's got to. It's all great. Yeah. This is something just to go through and look over, and it's always a good idea to map out procedures. Mm hmm. Thank you. Any input would be greatly appreciated. And then also, as a side note, even for the what we've just been going through, it's um, the board can develop itself procedures on how to vote. So you can look at that if you'd like. I can, uh, you can even look okay. at other towns. I have copies of. Them. So we'd like to have yeah, the opportunity to maybe address these. At the sure. Next I meeting. mean, if you like, it's just a, it's just a, a procedure, something basically for. People in the audience, so you can get, as sure. you know, quite uh, crazy with with when you get uh, with a lot of residents coming through. It's nice to have something they can look at and know where in the proceeding they, they get a chance to speak mm -hmm. and how it, how it goes. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have any other new business? I would like to uh, pose to the members of the board for discussion, simply, purely academic discussion of the possibility of beginning the process of an overlay district in the Route 20 area that we have discussed in recent meetings. The overlay district in Route 20 that we had discussed in recent meetings. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to put it out there for general discussion, purely academic, to see if there's any interest of the board to move forward with that. I think it's great. Uh, Mr. Cussey, do you have anything interesting there or no? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. We should okay. definitely... Uh, <clears throat> Go ahead and make that your know, motion to get that. Okay. Approved. So possibly Definitely. on the agenda for next meeting, if Absolutely. that would be, if the board sees fit. Yeah, because it's to initiate it. discussions, sure. Yeah, just for the purpose of discussion. Absolutely. Mr. Natoli? Yeah, I'm pushing this for years. It's, I know, it's, yeah. It's, it's something that needs to be done. Okay. Yeah, the area is moving in that direction. Yeah. We'll keep the variance in there. Mr. Ciccolo, I see that you're already in agreement. Yes, I am. Ms. Roach? In. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Marin, for the record, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and Ms. Blaze. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so I think, is it, uh, do I have a motion to put it on the agenda for the next meeting to begin the process? Yeah, we'll make that motion. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So noted. Do I have a motion to close the hearing? Motion to close the hearing. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to close the meeting. <laughs> One more, just to make sure I'm doing it right. Motion. <laughs> I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you very much, and I apologize for all oh, the mistakes no. I made. One thing? You're good. You <laughs> oh, we didn't go okay. through the... Um, minutes? No, we didn't have any minutes. minutes. These oh, are actually... Minutes. We have These are actually... <laughs> we're going to have to open the meeting again. All right. Make a motion to open, please. Motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right, so we do have some administrative duties we have to do. So as you can see, instead of minutes, we have the um, statement of facts from our last decisions. I did my best to be as accurate as possible with these. I think you all have a copy in your package. Mm -hmm. So in lieu of minutes, we're going to use these to accept the documentation. This one? Now, again, the email, was there going to be a new... Um, a rewrite of one? I think we got an email. Yes. The polar one. The polar one was the final official rewrite. Is that rewrite. here? Yep. You should have gotten in your package. There was, yeah, there's the one email. in the package was the rewrite? This is the correction, I believe, right? No, I thought the email said no, the attached. Email, no, the email was the, the email attachment. The email is the attachment. Disregard okay. the one in the package. Correct. So this one is disregarded. So who printed the one from the email? <laughs> Anybody? I have it. You um, do? I left it in my, my records at home. I, the, I yeah. filed it. But what are the okay. changes? It was really just the, uh, the substantial difference was what I, I did not write uh, which members voted and what in favor or against. Okay. And he basically just added that. Okay. Otherwise, the body of the information stayed the same. Uh, if you want to make one correction in there, it's, I think the original motion was to approve that didn't get the votes, correct? My recollection? Yes, that is correct. And I think that's what the correction stated. Okay, that, was, that's what the correction stated? Yes, that's what the okay. correction okay. stated. That I, just wanted to I sure. wrote that it was denied right. in this, and it was actually that it was approved, but the voting members did not have enough votes. Right. And then it shows afterwards okay. who voted in which way. Okay. This is missing. Thank you. Right. Yeah, but the, the decision itself. Yeah, decision itself is right. Three, two. Yes, yes, but yes. No, no. It was. Uh, it was a motion to. How did he put this? This the one for Pola might not be the newest. <clears throat> you guys, want to hold off on signing until? Then? I mean, unless you do, you know for sure that you printed that last one that she. It looks actually the same as the one that came in the packet. Except to deny the, the special permit, except, except for the the board made the following findings of fact. The four findings of fact is missing from the one that you printed. Yeah, the um, the Sheila Conroy prints mm -hmm. all these out. I just facilitate yeah. getting them signed. Okay. So, I don't so we don't know if it's that one or not. What do you want to okay. do? You want to hold we'll off? Hold off on that wanna, one. I mean, I probably yeah. have it on my email. Yeah, no, you want we'll me to call it up? It. Okay. We'll give this one back okay. to you then, and we'll hold off on that one. Okay. This one's good, right? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> My signature's quick. Yeah. That's a, this, that's a good one. Okay. 
from the other guy? Yes, oh, that's okay. from the last one. Okay. Let's do the share. Uh, this is something that you might want to consider. Um, timeline now is, is an issue. Um, we might want to maybe sign it and then have it, you know, you might want to check, have the proper pages put in. Um, we're running a little late on, on timeline only because we meet once a month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have 14 days since that we're really past part of it. That's mm -hmm. not fatal, but they, it's supposed to be with, within 14 days. We're past that. So you want to sign it? If we go another them? 30 days, we're going to be past the 100, I believe, mm -hmm. or close to it. What's Sheila's last name? Conroy, right? Uh, okay. Hold on. Uh, I got it right here. So there's an issue with just the timeline that where it has to be brought in. Well, July 17th was meeting. That is the new one. Well, the That's problem the is from the day we make the decision, you have 14 days to have the written in. I actually have the new one on my email. Okay. Let me just do a quick yep. Yep. comparison to see if we can. Or I didn't think this was the correct written. Okay. Discussion, discussion by board. One member of the board used the sit sign as a comparison. Yep, that's all there. And then look on this one that she sent us. It doesn't have the... Yeah, you need the... Um, we can just, one more you can just add that page of the, back. the of criteria of the, of the conditions. conditions. This still says deny. I know. Okay. Through the chair. Mm -hmm. The, um, there was a... I have a, um... Writing from um, Attorney Hennigan's office, mm -hmm. just in regards to clerical issues, and it just states that uh, to correct an inadvertent or clerical error in the decision, so that the record the record reflects its true intent, uh, can be done uh, so long as that the correction does not constitute a reversal of conscious decision. Um, does not grant relief different from originally sought. So, in other okay. words, we can so do if we it, sign it and she it, edits okay. it, it's fine. It okay. fine. Coming back. <laughs> I got it right here. Just so we don't get it in on the timeline. Mm -hmm. And through the chair, something that you might want to consider, and we can find out if, um, if there's Wi Fi in the building, if the board could have access, because it is with today's technology. To have an iPad and to be able to look up things, even mm. even Google Maps and things during a hearing, if you want to see something, it's, it can be very helpful. So it might be whatever password if for the town employees. I imagine you guys have passwords for Wi-Fi here. Mm -hmm. We get one, you know, for the board. That's why Megan doesn't have to use her. Yeah, <laughs> it's my data plan. <laughs> my yeah. data plan. Um, this one. Uh, you might you. have to sign, but you see if you change yourself. Yes, I'm not on that one. Is that Wade? Yep. That's Wade. Yeah. These are two signed ones to go back. Perfect. Just need signature on some advertising. Constitute. That's the board. Uh, chair. The chair. Yeah, the chair. Making sure. Okay. Thank a lot you. of signing, signature sign. That's it for me. Okay. Thank you, sir. So now we have a motion to close the hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion. One more time. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. <laughs>